Well, hello once again. Even though the temperature is really freezing outside, even here in Arkansas, yeah, I, I kind of feel bad for you guys up north. I think you all are in for a really wicked winter this year, uh, which includes us, which is, you know, a lot colder than usual. But I think you, you guys are going to be in for it. Maybe a blizzard or two. I hope not, but you never know. I mean, it's this cold in Arkansas this time of the year. It usually means the north is in for some big time frigid weather. Okay, uh, on to another subject here, <laughs> our cabinet. Today is scrub time around the bottom. We're gonna take uh, these rags. I have a bunch more. Uh, like I said, the wife keeps all the old towels and washcloths for me that I, I'll cut them up and use them for all sorts of things. Then I have some cleaner, you know, the standard old Windex uh, multi-surface stuff. We're gonna go ahead and give it a good cleaning on the inside, let it set for half a day. And then we're gonna do some taping off and uh, some spraying. To help us accomplish that, I went down to the paint store again. I told them, hey, take some more paint out of here and give me another spray can. So they did, another five bucks, I'm good to go. So I now have a little bit left in the old can and I have a new full can and I have enough left in here to even fill another one if needed, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. I don't plan to put the paint on quite as heavily in the bottom of the cabinet as I did the top. So let's get this thing cleaned up. Well, the temps aren't too bad today, so I can go ahead and do a little spraying outside with the sun. I'm not going to have a whole lot of time. I'm going to have to get with it. So I'll show it to you when we're done. Light coat is all that's going to be put on. As far as the blue paint goes, <laughs> that's about as good as she's going to get. I wanted to save a little in the can. I still have a little left, but she's coated pretty darn good on the bottom. I put it just a little thicker than a light coat, but... I think she'll be okay. Well, I got a little touch up to do along the black, you know, on the edge here, maybe a couple of other places, but as far as I'm concerned, the blue is done. Well, there it is, folks. I went ahead and painted the two white uh, portions that go down to the uh, grill that match up with the white blocks on the grill. And then uh, touched up a little black here and there that needed to be touched up. It's drying down there. I think it's looking pretty darn good. Let's take check out the rear again. The rear looks real good. I think she's going to be okay. At long last. No more gluing. Hopefully no more painting. <laughs> there probably will be some. I'll probably have to touch it up here and there. Uh, in the next video, uh, what, we're, what we'll do is we're going to have to come up with a grill cloth for this thing. You know, the original grill cloth covered the entire front. And I didn't understand that. You know, I, I contacted Brendan. I said, why, why don't we just put some grill cloth around here? And then we can go ahead and put some on the speakers if we want. You know, and have a double grill cloth kind of set up. You know, thin cloth. It'll work real well to protect against any dust being sucked in. I said, why do you think they had a complete, you know, this is like 31 inches wide and a couple of feet tall. So why do you think they had such a, a large piece of cloth? And I, I said, do you think it might have something to do with the grill maybe vibrating against the wood, you know, when the, the heavy base, uh, the speakers are running? And I said the cloth kind of helped muffle it, but, but it was very, very thin cloth. You know, I couldn't, I just couldn't see how that would have really helped. And he said, you know, that's probably why it's there. And what it boiled down to is neither one of us really knew 100% sure as to why that cloth was like that so he thinks uh, I should go ahead and put the entire cloth back on so that's what I'm going to do and but I still may put a cloth over the top of each of the speakers but that'll be in the next video tell you what we're going to do uh, before signing off we're just going to go ahead and restuff this capacitor now, all we're going to do is take these and put them inside there and bend the tabs over and then we'll end this video Next time, we'll go ahead and put in a diode that takes the place of the uh, selenium rectifier. So let me show you how we're going to do that. After I uploaded the last video and made it public, I realized that I had made an egregious error. Uh, actually, this was not a yellow wire. It was the green. And I said, geez, I wonder who's going to catch that. You know, I went ahead and changed it. Sure enough, one of our subscribers did catch it. Good for him. I, I told him, excellent, you're the only one who did. Or if the, you know, you others didn't, 
didn't catch or caught it, didn't say anything. But anyway, the 0.75 will be green. The 1.65 microfarad will be gray. So let's get these out of the packages. Well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a green wire, which I have right here. We're going to hook it to one side of the 1.0 the 1 microfarad capacitor. Let's back up here. And then we're going to, I don't have a gray wire, so I'll have to use a white wire for the other side of the, or one side of the other capacitor. So what we've got is a green will be hooked to one black, a white will be hooked to the other black. The other two uh, wires that are left over in each of the capacitors will be soldered together. And all of this set of wires, this set, this wire and this wire will all come out of a hole drilled for each, each wire. We'll have three holes in the top. Just like you see right there, we'll drill next to it. We'll come right up out of there and we'll solder the wires to each of these terminals. One, uh, a green wire will go to one, uh, the white wire will go to the other, and then probably, I'm not sure, maybe I'll put a red one here for the last one. I don't know, because that wire is kind of a yellowish green. Maybe I'll just go with a yellowish, kind of whitish. I'll probably just go with yellow. Let me, let me cut a yellow wire here. Hang on. All right, that's a little bit better. We're going to have a yellow wire connected to these two. We're going to have a white wire connected to one side of the capacitor. That's the 1.5 right here. And then we'll have the green wire connected to the 1.0, which is right here. But first, and, and then, you know, we expect to fit them all inside this can. <laughs> that remains to be seen. But first, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to cut off these tabs off of both of these. They'll never fit in there with that thing on. Let's get the motor tool cranked up and get them off. They won't fit. I have knocked off those little lips. Put them side by side. They will not fit down in the can. They just barely won't fit. So, what do we do? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We have a little bit of a lip all the way around the bottom of this thing and maybe a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch maybe a little bit more that we can take off before we even get to the uh, the potting uh, looks like poxy kind of a potting there I think I can knock that down with my motor tool enough to where it'll clear the side of the can I might be able to do it with both of them but I don't think so this one here is well this one here does have a little bit on the bottom you might be able to take off let me do a little shaving and see what happens. I don't want to get into the potting compound and I don't want to get into the side of the capacitor where the and where the actual capacitor is, you know, but as long as we have plastic to play with, I don't mind taking some off. And if I muff it up, so what? I paid two dollars and fifty-eight cents for both of them, and that included shipping, so it's not like it's the end of the world. Let me see what I can do. I shaved at the bottom of this one on both sides, just the plastic, nothing more. They didn't go very deep at all. I, I rounded the corners. And I think I might have shaved the top a little bit. Yeah, I shaved the top just a little bit too on this one, on both sides. Again, just the plastic. I did not get down into the potting compound at all. On this one here, I shaved just this one side. Okay, again, just the plastic. I don't think I did the bottom, no just the plastic. Now let's put them side by side and see if they'll fit. They should fit. My calibrated eye says so. Look at there. Now I ask you, who the man, huh? Who the man? Okay, all we have to do is uh, attach our colored wires, drill the holes through the top, bring it up and wrap it around, uh, stick it through the holes. I'm not going to solder them until I get, get it back in the uh, mechanism, um, we'll solder all the wires at the same time. Look at that. Perfect fit. Can't beat it. There we have it. I haven't put the top on yet. I still have to drill the holes. But the green wire that I attached uh, is connected to the one microfarad capacitor. The white wire, which should be gray, but I don't have any, is connected to the 1.5 microfarad capacitor. And then the two leftover wires from each cap were soldered together, as you can see right there. And then I hooked a yellow wire to it. Now these three wires will come up through the top of the capacitor from the bottom. I got to drill three holes. 
and connect to their respective terminals that are labeled on the top. 0.75 will be the one, and the other one, 1 1.65, will be the 1.5, okay? And then the yellow wire that's left over will go to this one marked with the red, with the red paint. I don't know where that came from. Some kind, I guess that just denotes at the factory that it's not connected to a, uh, a ground or anything. I don't know. I have no idea. Let's get the holes drilled and get the wires on. Then we can, then we can fold over the tabs and uh, we can call this uh, video a wrap. That's it. All done. All sealed back in there. The tabs have been bent down. That was, a, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And they don't rattle or shake around in there. They're nice and tight. Next time, we'll go ahead and put it on the mechanism and we will remove that selenium rectifier. Until then, until next time, this is Chuck.